Well, I received an email. That email was months ago, wasn't it? Months ago. From a lady from the country of Estonia giving me her testimony. I read it. It was very powerful. And, uh, and then uh, all of a sudden I get a phone call from my staff saying that she's uh, coming to see you. And she flew all the way from Estonia to New York City, rented a car, and drove all day and all night uh, to be here yesterday in time to have a meeting with me and to meet for a few minutes and to share her story of what is happening uh, in her country and what's happening, more importantly, in her heart and what this ministry uh, it has meant to her and what this message it means for her and her people. It's incredible, her story. And so I want you to uh, pay attention. I want you to humble yourself because Yahweh is bigger than, uh, than you, bigger than me, bigger than this ministry. And he cares about every tribe and every tongue that is across this world. And so when we say that we want to be a light to the nations, this is what she said, and I'll, and I'll bring her up. You can start to come up if you'd like. But she said, you know, Jim, Passion for Truth says that they want to be a light to the nations. She said, I am the nations that you're talking about. And your light has reached me, and I want to help forward this light into my people. And so would you give a very warm welcome to my new friend, Marika from Estonia. I'm going to... Uh, to stand up here behind her for more than one reason. For one, because I stand behind her. And I told her that, and I still mean that. Even though she is new, she is from the Lord. And I believe she has a very strong calling on her life. And uh, many of you do not know that in our staff meetings and in uh, Wednesday morning prayer meetings uh, for months, I have been asking very specific prayers. Father, I pray that you would network us and bring apostles and bring people from the nations to connect with so that we can extend this message out in a more significant way. And the second reason I'm going to stand up here is because I am fluent in Estonian and I'm going to translate if she has any trouble. Just kidding. I can hardly speak English. All right. It's open? Yes. Hello. I'm really coming from Estonia and I'm um, a little bit tired because the time is very different. Everybody's sleeping on, in Estonia right now. <laughs> so I am awake and um, I can share um, the reason why I am here. I came from the nation, from the small country of the North Europe. Somebody knows where is it? Who knows where is Estonia? Except my son. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Um, where is Scandinavia? Finland, Sweden, and other side, Russia. There is one small country. Everywhere is sea. We are the sea people. And um, uh, we are now in Europe Union. But um, our country is, um, has the first place in Europe as a most non-Christian country, non-religion country on all Europe. It's very good to pl uh, place to live because there is a lot of work, really. And um, I came to Christ to know Christ 19 years ago. I grew up on the atheist family, and um, it was the time of uh, Soviet Union, and nobody told me about God, about Jesus, about the Bible, about anything, about um, invisible world. Uh, 
Only what they said was that um, everybody who heard some voice or see the ghost or believe God, they are a little bit sick people. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but it was so in my life when I was a small child. And my grandfather, they, he says very often to me that um, don't believe never God because uh, they, it is like um, sickness. If you go to church, maybe, maybe they doing with you something <laughs> terrible. Don't go, please. And um, that is not true. So um, I grew up and um, terrible things um, become on my life when I was nine years old. One night I felt very bad presence on my room as uh, somebody standing there. It was very, very, very strange, very um, terrible. And um, uh, it, it was like ghost, like, like a person. But uh, I told this to my mother, and mother said, everything only by nerve system. You're nervous a little bit. It is a panic attack or something. And um, they, they give me medicine. If I took the medicine, I started to see also <laughs> the terrible vision. So nobody helped me. And uh, I started to seek um, help from different places. I um, visited um, witches. I read some, some uh, books. Uh, and uh, nobody can help me. Um, the bad presence and the experiences uh, with the um, spiritual world, there was very often on my life in teenager, when I was teenager. And um, I never thought that maybe I go to church or I seek the God. I never seek God. And 19 years ago, then I was a big girl. I had two children, the small children then. One night, it was a very, very deep experience. I slept on my bed, on my bedroom, and the presence of dead spirit came to my room again. He stand like an like, uh, angel or, or man or, or some, somebody who has the personality. He's standing, and uh, when he was very close to me, I couldn't move. My body, all my body was like frozen, and I couldn't move even my finger. Even my finger. I was like that, like dead person. And it was very, very terrible, you can <laughs> imagine. And, um, and, and this moment, and next moment, I um, thought that I'm going to die, or I go, I, I lost my mind totally. I, 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 don't, I don't know. And then, very, very, um, very uh, um, high flight. Every was, every, everything was like flighting on my room. I, I have seen anything after that. And uh, at the next moment, I was on other room. It was not like room, but I didn't know what is it. I didn't know I'm dead or alive, where I am. I, I had no <laughs> idea. And uh, I have seen, but I did, I did, I know that it's me. My name, my past, everything I know it's me. And um, when I looked forward, there was very high place, like angels uh, worship somebody. It was very, very far, but I, 
I understand they are like persons or, or somebody, white dressing and very big joy and worship came from those people or angels. And uh, I was so surprised. I think, what is it? What is it? There is everything what everybody want in this world. But nobody in this world never can be so happy and so thankful and so full of love. And then I have seen one man looking at me. It was directly, but very far, white dressing. And then I looking at this man, at the moment I know he is Jesus, Yeshua. He is no aliens or my dead grandmother or somebody else. I know he is God, he is Jesus. Um, you must understand that uh, I even didn't know that Jesus is the real person. I didn't know that. I, I of course heard his name somewhere, but I didn't know that he is the real person on the history. And uh, he, he was there. I was so shocked. I know at the one moment that he is alive. He is um, uh, this, um, he is the um, one way, the ones, no more ways. Uh, and the um, Bible and the churches talking about the Jesus who is standing there, and he is the very alive. He is more and more real, like anything else on the world. But um, some, sometimes my husband asking from me, it was very, very good to stand by Jesus. Very, very good. No, it was not very good. It was very, very strange because I was not her people, from her people. I understand but that I am a sinner and my sin is uh, that I'm not believe God, I'm not worship God, I'm not adore God. And, um, and uh, I felt again some uh, bad presence behind me and they took me and draw some very, very dark place. And then I crying all my heart, please, Jesus, Help me, help me to go back to the world and say to everybody that no more ways, only on one way, he is alive and all other ways are deceptions from devil. It's not true. Don't believe the witchcraft or, or new age or anything else. This is the death the way to the dead. Once is the Jesus. And um, as you see me, I am by flesh there. <laughs> I'm not ghost or spirit. So he uh, sent me back and I was on my bed again. Very full of joy, very full of um, uh, love and very free from the spirit of fear or death or whatever it was before. I was at a second totally free. It was it, no sickness of the mind or something. It was the spiritual world and I was involved before. And uh, God delivered me very, very quickly, very secondly. When light come, the darkness <laughs> lived. Amen. It's, it's, it's the good news. But um, after, after that, 
after two years, God remember me. But I must say to everybody, he is alive. And I, I, I say that the story, it, it's a very long story, but uh, my English is not so good to tell today, maybe, maybe, maybe next year, or I don't know. And, um, and my, my pastor understand that this is the God's calling, not, not my, my calling. And God called me to the full-time ministry in Estonia and the North Nations in this time. And uh, I served God more than, than even 15 years at uh, Pentecostal Church. And um, I became the Bible teacher and preacher. And my favorite topics was um, how to lead by Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit gifts, and how to test the Spirit, how to test everything. Uh, how to seek the truth. And um, it was a very amazing time, and God opened door everywhere, in the jail, on the university, on the uh, different congregations, everywhere, everywhere. But uh, one day, very suddenly, my pastor died, and his wife too, very quickly. The, the very, very, very same time. And it was very, very difficult time for me because everything stopped on my life. I lived from my church um, because my pastor was the most supporter on this ministry, my pastor and, and this church. And um, big, big sadness came to my, my spirit before that. And 2009, again, on the night. I like night time. It's very, very good time. Because everybody is very quiet then. Nobody calling and so. And, and I, it was, again, the night time. And I had a night dream, big vision. And this vision was all, also very, very big shock for me. Because, as I said before, I was the Pentecostal teacher. You know what this Pentecostal teacher is. I very often was very, very drunk of Holy Spirit and those things. So I loved um, the Old Testament things. Not, not loved, but um, I was not serious. Many things, but somebody says to me before. And in this vision, God's presence came, very, very big God's presence. And he showed me Bible, the Old Testament Bible, yeah? And he says, look my word, you are the teacher of Bible, but uh, everything you're teaching is not good. Every, everything is not good. You must preach the true, but you don't know what is true. Because they teaching uh, from the churches in Estonia, this is not everything not true. And then God said to me very, very clearly, I am against the body of Christ, because they changed my word. They changed my word. A little bit here, a little bit there. And they're not preaching the truth. They changed the truth. And uh, I can't bless the church if the basement is weak. Because uh, if we are preaching, uh, we must preach the bread of life. But if the bread is um, mixed, mixed, maybe there is some, something sand or I don't know what. This is not healthy. We, 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 we can't be strong. We can't be alive if we're eating not very good bread. And he says to me, they changed my Sabbath. 
they lying because I never changed the Sabbath. I never did it. They did it. But they said that I did it. But this is the lie. I never did it. And uh, this is the very, very big problem. If they change, my word is so holy, so holy. And we must preach only God's holy word, not what we mean, not, not what we're thinking about this. We must only preach true, because this is the bread of life. And uh, I have seen this on the night vision. And, and he says to me, you must learn first. You must change your teaching. The Holy Spirit and those things was good, but you must put more there. And the basement and the true is coming from the Torah, from the Old Testament. If you not understand those things, you never understand the New Testament. You must first go back on the beginning, what was on the beginning. You must go back on the God's word, and then you can build everything. Then you can build it. And um, it was very heavy to me, because uh, even on the night, because I say to God, please, uh, don't tell this to me. They ki they, they're going to kill me there. Yeah, it's true. But God was not interested about this, what I'm saying. Yeah, he, he said to me, go and teach and preach the true. Go and preach and teach the true. And um, then I wake up. I came back from the vision. And I said to my husband, listen, now we are in real trouble because if this is God, we must do that. <laughs> and the big problem is our teachings too. If, uh, if those things, what God says, there was many things. I, I doing very shortly, you understand. If, if uh, we must do everything what God says, it's a big problem. And my husband was very happy about this. <laughs> he likes troubles. And uh, he says, uh, thanks God, I believe. I feel it's God. Now I believe it's God. And um, he um, started to find some, um, some teachings about the Sabbath, and, uh, because in our country, nobody holds the Sabbath, only Seventh-day Adventist church. And um, they are very against uh, those t topics. And um, my husband was so happy. And he found very quickly on the internet, on the YouTube, uh, Pastor Jim Staley teaching about Sabbath. My um, husband um, working in Finland, uh, and he called me from Finland and says, listen, I feel this is the true. Now I feel this is the true. There is life, and this is the true, because uh, we must return back to the government. We must do this. And um, he started to listen. The, those teachings and look the videos and everything and um, uh, one thing what I must say too was that one year before my pastor died died uh, Holy Spirit says for me to me very clearly that uh, you must go to USA to America uh, to go forward and build up your ministry. You understand, I was in ministry in this time, and this ministry before was very good. All my country was open, 
I, I, I preached uh, five uh, times on the week, even six times on the week. Every day I preached somewhere. And then Holy Spirit said, everything will stop on your life if you're not going to USA, and then you can go forward. Very strange. But one, exactly one year after that, my pastor died and everything stopped on my life. And now I'm here. I try to find some boat because uh, I um, uh, wrote to Pastor Jim Staley on February and I tried to go, but it's very expensive to go here. And I tried to found some ship or boat, <laughs> but I, I don't found it. And um, and this is the reason why I'm here. God says you must go back to church true, and he very clearly shows that the point of this teaching is in America. And I believe it is. I just want to encourage you and believe that if God wanted to do something, he doing this, and we must be obedient. Sometimes this is very, very difficult. This is difficult to me also. To, to go to America, and I, I even don't know where is the place, St. Louis or St. Charles, or what, what's there going on. But I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I feel the people are very warm here, very warm, and very full of love. So, um, I, I, I bless, I bless you very much. My uh, English is a little bit bad for two reasons. First, we are the very small nation, but uh, we, we can reach out for the all north because um, we speak Finnish, we speak Swedish, uh, we speak Russian, we speak German. <laughs> and uh, I also learn all of those, <laughs> those languages. That's why every language what I speak is not, not very good. <laughs> but I speak, I can speak in Russian and Sweden and Swedish and in German and Finnish too, <laughs> this story. So please, please forgive me. These, these things. Yes. Do you understand something? Who understands what I'm saying? Yes. Ask a question. Um, t tell me or tell them wh why you're here. What, what is your heart? What is your desire? My desire is my desire. First, my desire is to be obedient for God, because he says to me that I must uh, uh, learn and teach the truth and uh, also bring this for the nations, because uh, God many times told me also that uh, his plan, plan is not just to be a club, good club somewhere. Um, time is very short and uh, he loves people so much that I, I also had one vision, a little bit, um, I shared a little bit this. One day I had a vision that um, God's heart is like uh, the father's or mother's heart whose um, child going to die. If we are parents, we have children. We know that we doing every, everything to save our children's life. It's true. And God shows me the heart of God. And he shows that he want, he feels the same what we feel if 
For example, I ask somebody, please go for my children and give the medicine or something if he is sick. And you answer me, no, I have no time to go. I, I, this is not my, my, my case. Very often we doing so. God wants to reach out for every people and every nation. And my vision, why I'm here, is if it's possible to be connected to this uh, true minister and the, uh, build up in Estonia and, uh, if possible, in Finland and Sweden too, the same fellowship and Bible teaching. This is my, my very, very small vision. This is not my, <laughs> this is the first, this first. And this is very necessary because um, Estonian people, they are very open for spiritual world. They, this is very occult country, very occult country. Every person for, <laughs> have a personal beach or, or somebody. And um, even Christian um, seek the word only. Somebody tell the future or, or something, on the church even. But this is not what God want. God want first that we teaching the true, the same, the basement. And uh, our vision is to build the same thing in Estonia and the neighbor countries. So if you can pray about this, I'm very happy because this is not easy. And Carl told to go to USA. And my husband, I, I must be obedient to my husband too. And he says, I know this is Jim Staley. <laughs> he, he said this to me, not me, he says. I know I must go to America, but he, he told me, you must go first to Chimstead. And I'm here, because even in the morning, he called me today and uh, give big greetings for everybody here and says that um, he prayed about uh, Passion of True Fellowship and every, everybody here, and he felt very big joy and presence of God. And he says, I know this is the right things. This is the very right things. There is the true. I'm not saying about the people, but God doing this. Yeah, thanks, thanks for God, not for people, of course. So, Amen. I, well, let me ask you, I'm, I'm just gonna keep asking you questions because uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, you may not be around for a little while, so we want to pick your brain for a little bit. But uh, being someone who's in ministry like yourself and have been in ministry for 15 years um, and all of these amazing things that have happened to you. And uh, you probably never in your wildest dreams thought that you'd be standing on a stage in the middle of Missouri uh, talking. Uh, what would you tell us? Uh, because as Americans we don't get to see the different cultures very often. And so we're kind of stuck in our thoughts of what we are like, and it's hard for us to understand what the rest of the world is like. What would you tell them that they can do to, to help you in your vision? What, what is it that they, they, they can do? Just I'm not even sure what my question is, but transfer to them what you transferred to me yesterday of, of, uh, for, for your people? The question is what they can do. Yeah. I think the most important things is that um, we have the background, no, not background, back, uh, um, and connections for um, for um, fellowships or teachings, what is the same? And um, I think uh, the praying and connection with those people, the friendship, the fellowship, is the most important for us uh, now. Because we are 
totally alone on this teaching in Estonia now. And um, we need people who understand these things, who are praying for us, who are helping us to do this, because we can't do this alone. It's so big and so heavy. And uh, those people need the, the teaching so much. So um, it was the question, or it's yes, I mean more. we we maybe I, I not understand. No, no, that's that's great. I mean, what what she's desiring. I told her yesterday. I said you don't even know what you're saying because we just had two meetings this week. What she's really asking um, is it possible for us to start a passion for truth in Estonia? And she didn't even know that we've had two meetings this week and our staff uh, to put together a blueprint for satellite fellowships around the world and a training uh, program for uh, people that are pastors that are called to, to shepherd uh, the sheep and to start uh, fellowships, Hebraic fellowships around the world and around this country. And, um, and so uh, I think all of us, would you agree with me, the answer would be yes. We want, we, we want that. We want that. Yahweh wants that. And so um, here's what I would like to do uh, for her this evening. And I, I know that, matter of fact, I, before I go there, I want to say this, is when you were talking, this word has not come to my mind since I was in grade school, but how many remember pen pals? Okay, back when there was such thing as paper and pen. Uh, but, uh, but I really think it would be an amazing thing as our fellowship grows and connects with people overseas that uh, when, when they get a passion for truth, Estonia up and running, wouldn't it be amazing that if you had a personal friend that you could connect with and mentor overseas and begin to minister to them? Because I can assure you where maybe just you and your husband right now, you'll have hundreds of people uh, before long and you're going to need some help. And so, would you be interested in connecting online with people that, uh, that can do that? We can, we can do that and begin to minister to them. Amen. Stuart. We will provide the contact information. Um, um, how can we do that? When you watch, let me turn to the camera. When you watch this uh, the second time around, uh, you will see her contact information at the bottom, okay? And so we'll make sure we put a lower third in there uh, on Monday. Even though my guys are off on Monday, uh, I'll beg for them to see if they can get this up. Uh, I'm not putting any pressure on them at all. Uh, but uh, so pray for, for Adam to come in and, and his name's Adam Barbie. If you want to put him in your prayers, uh, and he'll... We'll take care of it for you. We will do that. In the meantime, he may not work here next week, but uh, <laughs> no, we love these guys. And, and uh, matter of fact, give it up for my tech guys. They are amazing. They really are. It's not the first time that they come in early. They stay late. Uh, they do whatever it takes to bless you guys. They know that there are thousands of people uh, that, that wait for uh, these videos to be produced uh, to watch them because they can't catch it because they're 10 hours in front of us and it's 1 o'clock in the morning, you know, their time. So they wait for it diligently. Uh, not putting any more guilt on you. But anyway, Adam. Um, another thing that I would like to do, I know that they're not expecting this at all, but I would like to take up a collection uh, for her to bless her and her family. Uh, her husband, she said, is working hard to pay her bills over here, uh, as well as the, their normal bills. And so it would be uh, our blessing and our honor uh, to bless you uh, if we could be generous and take up a, a, an offering. Is that okay? That to jumpstart uh, Passion for Truth Estonia and let them know that we are fully behind them, we fully support them, and uh, as we roll out uh, this program uh, for uh, new pastors across the world, um, keep that in your prayers, because uh, it's not about us, ladies and gentlemen. It, it is about spreading his message as fast as possible before he comes back. And, uh, and all that to be said, if 
Ebony and Ivory are watching tonight. You know who, who you are. Uh, would you contact me because I have lost your email and I have some very important news for you and I need to connect with you. So uh, thanks to technology, I can do this. So if, if your group is watching, I want to make a great a high, a personal high out to Oklahoma City. And uh, if you could contact me as soon as possible, I'd appreciate it. In the meantime, uh, yes, please make out any checks to Passion for Truth, but put in the memo Estonia, okay? And that way we'll know it is for her. Or you can email info at passionfortruth.com if you'd like to give online and you feel compelled by the Spirit to bless her and to, what I would like to do is pay for all of her bills, uh, whatever it took for her to get here and get back. Uh, because I believe that if the Father tells you you're going to do something, guess what? It's His problem to, to provide the finances for it. You guys know that's the way I feel. We're going to reach the nations. It's going to take a billion dollars to do that. So that means at some point, some oil guy is going to have to write checks for millions of dollars to reach Estonia and to reach Russia and to reach Finland and Sweden and Israel and all the way across to China. And uh, it's just the way it's going to have to be. So that's why money's not a big deal to me because it's not my problem. My problem is to seek first the kingdom of God and, uh, and to spread his message. And if he doesn't provide the way, then I stop wherever I am. And, uh, and so I believe that Abba is going to meet, uh, meet your need uh, tonight and do that. So would, can, can we, uh, yes, did you want to say something? No. <laughs> she says no. That means that the Holy Spirit is probably telling you to say something. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think we can't uh, do God's plan alone, never. So we must understand that we are, are the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is not here only or in Estonia or in Russia. It's everywhere. And uh, it's one family. I believe it. And that's why uh, I tell once again, we can't do nothing, anything alone. We need to gather very much everywhere. More than more than more. Everywhere, every yes. country. And that's why um, this is the God, God, God work. Yes. This is not my ministry. This is God's ministry. And yeah. I'm just a servant. And we are just a servants. Amen. Can, can anybody see a, a pattern that's happening at Passion for Truth? That's unintentional. Okay? A pattern over, over the last nine months as the Father has been growing uh, something in the womb. Uh, of, of, of reaching out uh, to the nations. As we reach out, guess what's happening? They're reaching back. In my wildest dreams, one of my staff members said yesterday, Jim, did you ever think in your wildest dreams when you were in your basement that someone from uh, 10,000 miles away would stand before you and say, help me reach my people from a different country in a different language? And the answer is, uh, no, I didn't. But in His amazing will, it is happening. And so this is real, ladies and gentlemen. This is not like, uh, let's just say it'll be cool to have it in a different language. These are real people. And last week, uh, I believe it was last week or the week before, uh, we had a, a, a Hispanic uh, speaker up here saying, we need to get this message into Spanish. There's hundreds of millions of people around the world that, that speak Spanish that need this message, and we need you to be a part of this. And so uh, she happens to have a, a studio, and in, 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 in she does radio, and so she has high quality, uh, uh, my sound guy would love this, she has high quality equipment to do translation into multiple different languages. And uh, my friends, this is where it begins. This is where it begins. Where it ends, is in the New Jerusalem with the biggest conference uh, known to man, okay? But this is where it begins. And, uh, and I can tell you this, and I'll, I'll speak for her, but you are the reason she's here. Amen. All of you that are online, that, that are not just online, but, but that you, you support this ministry, this is what you get. This is it. And I hope that blesses you because you are the reason she's here. And you may not realize next year this time how many people Yahweh will use through her 
to minister to. Amen. Now is the time. Today is the day. Why am I so excited? Now you know. Because we're reaching Russia 10,000 people a month. Did you hear what I just said? 10,000 people a month. I'm not supposed to tell you this, and I'm probably going to get in trouble, but there is one of the top Orthodox Russian popes in the world that is preparing a video just for you. He's one of the most, most influential uh, uh, popes out there, bishops or whatever he is. And, uh, and he caught this message. And he's traveling the world telling his Russian Orthodox people about the message of Torah. Yeah. Folks. <laughs> that message, just so you know, it's just so you know, I want you to know because I can open up the books and we'll, we're going to end up doing that by the end of the year anyway. It's $2,000 a month to translate everything we have into Russian. Do you think it's worth it? Yes. Do you think it's worth it? $2,000 a month, we're touching 10,000 Russian people a month. And that is only the beginning. Only the beginning. When we get it in Estonian and Finnish and Finnish and Funish and whatever other languages are out there, we're going to have, we're going to have 144,000 people. I guarantee it. Just a number off the top of my head. Would you do me a favor? Would you stand with me? And would you pray with me? Not just for our friend Marika, but for all of her people and for every person, man, woman, and child. She did not go into the details of the darkness of her country. I happen to know a little bit about Estonia, quite a bit, and it is one of the darkest countries. She's not lying. It is probably, I would say, in the top five most occult, occult, satanic uh, rituals in the world. Am I right? Yes. In Estonia. I have met people that have been forced to give up their children for child sacrifice. So go figure, the father would start right in the lair of Hasatan. So Father, we come before you and we praise your holy name. We thank you, Father, that you have reached down out of heaven to someone who did not even know you existed, didn't even know your name, didn't even know your son's name. And Father, you caused her to stand in the third heaven far away from your throne. And Father, she doesn't even know why she couldn't come near your throne. She was not even allowed because she did not know you and she was unclean. She must stand outside the gate. But Father, your grace and your mercy is so phenomenal. You saw this day. You saw it. And out of mercy for all the people in the Norse area, You gave her another chance. You put life back into her body. You gave her words to speak. You gave her eloquence of speech and a zeal to teach your people. And Father, it blows my mind that you gave her 19 years, 17 years, however many years it was. You did not reveal your Holy Torah to her until just a couple of years ago. You gave her all of those years to teach her the foundation of your word. So she'd be familiar with your terms and your scriptures enough that when she, you came to her the second time, she would have a strong foundation and an eloquence to teach those in Egypt your ways. Lord, everything that you do is amazing. It never ceases to amaze me how unbelievable you are. 
And so, Abba, I just ask that you would anoint her right now in Yeshua's name. Father, we anoint Marika, that you would give her everything that she needs, that you would give her the eloquence of speech, that you would give her the finances, that you would overwhelm her with an anointing. Father, that the very first people that she would bring into, the, into this ministry in Estonia would be strong leaders, Father, that they would be shepherds themselves, that she would be raising up pastors, Lord, to duplicate Father, this is, this is my life verse coming to true, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, and the things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men and women who will also be qualified to teach others. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are raising up elders all over the world, that you will move your spirit into these countries in not a small way, but a very big way. Lord, I look forward to having an international conference where our biggest problem is finding translators. Lord, I'm asking for the greatest revival. And Marika stands before you, humbled, obedient to you. Now do your part. Overwhelm her with loving kindness and mercy. Bless her in every way, shape, and form. Give her the foundation that she needs and the people around her. Strengthen her husband. Let him be called out to do what he's called to do as they pastor the first Passion for Truth Fellowship in Northern Europe. Amen.